You hear it everywhere, right? AI is coming to manufacturing. It's supposed to be this magic wand that's going to finally sort out the chaos on the factory floor. But what if I told you it's not just failing to fix it? What if adding AI is actually making things worse? Yeah, let's get into that. I'm Dr. Lisa Lang, and today we're talking about AI for job shop scheduling. Because what's really happening is way more surprising than the sales pitch. And this quote from my article, linked in the description, it just nails it. Faster oscillations. Think about that. That's not a solution. That sounds like just creating chaos, but at lightning speed. This is the big idea we're going to unpack. And that's the big question, isn't it? How can that even be possible? I mean, this is AI we're talking about. It's supposed to be smarter than us. So how could it possibly mess up something as fundamental as a production schedule? Well, it turns out the problem isn't the I in AI. It's what we're asking it to be intelligent about. This is what's known as the AI paradox. And to really get our heads around why AI isn't the silver bullet everyone thinks it is, you've got to understand a little secret about how it actually learns. So this all started when my partner Brad had a really interesting thought. He wanted to see if AI, specifically ChatGPT, could recommend his new, much better approach to job shop pricing. So he asked it a really simple, straightforward question. Hey, how do you actually decide what to tell me? And the answer he got back? Well, it was a real eye-opener. Okay, look closely at the language here. Common practices. Widely accepted. Most established. You see what's happening? AI isn't programmed to find the best answer. It's programmed to find the most popular one. It just regurgitates what's already out there in the massive pile of data it was trained on. And that is the paradox in a nutshell. AI doesn't create new, better ways of doing things. It just pours concrete on the old ways. So if you want AI to recommend a better system, you first have to make that system the most common practice in the world. It's like a catch-22. It's a feedback loop that just keeps the status quo, even if it's completely broken. Okay, so if AI is just reinforcing these old rules, that begs the question. What exactly are these old rules, and where do they even come from? Well, for that, we've got to jump in a time machine and head back a few decades. You've seen this timeline, right? Over the last 60 plus years, we've had this constant parade of new acronyms. First, it was MRP in the 60s, then MRP2 in the 80s, then ERP, APS, Cloud ERP, and now the latest and greatest AI scheduling. On the surface, it looks like this amazing constant evolution. But if you peek under the hood, what was really changing? This table. This tells the whole story. Yeah, the labies changed, the interfaces got slicker, we got Gantt charts and cloud delivery, but the one thing that didn't change? The core planning engine. The fundamental logic has been pretty much the same since the 1960s, and that's the absolute key here. All these new shiny systems are built on a 50-year-old foundation that frankly doesn't get how a real job shop works. So what happens when you try to run a modern factory on that ancient flawed foundation? Well, you get this, this chaotic phenomenon. It's been around for so long it actually has a name. It's called scheduling nervousness. And no, that's not some new buzzword. People were talking about this back in the 80s. It's that feeling when one tiny thing goes wrong, a machine goes down, a part is late, and the entire schedule just blows up. The plan ripples, everything regenerates, and suddenly everyone's just firefighting. I mean, does that sound at all familiar to you? And this is how that chain reaction plays out every single day. The system spits out this perfect, beautiful schedule. But then you know, reality happens. Your dispatch lists are instantly obsolete. Work in progress starts piling up. Priorities are changing every hour. And it's all hands on deck just to put out fires. So what happens? You hit reschedule, which just creates a new, perfect plan that will be obsolete in five minutes. And eventually, everyone just gives up and goes back to a spreadsheet. The expensive software just sits there, abandoned, not because people are resistant to change, but because its core logic is fundamentally broken. Okay, so the logic seems solid, but what about the proof? 
I mean, this is a pretty big claim. If these systems have been failing us for decades, you'd expect to see that in the cold, hard numbers, right? And you do. This is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Just last year, manufacturing labor productivity actually went down in 52 industries. 52. Think about all the billions and billions of dollars spent on software that promised more efficiency. And in most cases, we are literally going backwards. And when you look specifically at AI, the numbers get even crazier. This research from MIT is just wow. They found that when you bolt generative AI onto these old legacy systems, a staggering 95% of companies see absolutely no business return. Only a tiny 5% manage to squeeze out any real value. So when you put it all together, it's just crystal clear. On one side, you have the promise. AI will finally fix scheduling. It will unlock massive efficiency. And on the other side, you have the reality. Billions spent, productivity is flat or falling, and the ROI, it's basically a rounding error. You just can't build a skyscraper on a crack foundation, and a new layer of AI isn't going to fix it. So where do we go from here? If just slapping AI on top of the old system is a dead end, what's the alternative? Well, it means we need a totally different way of thinking. It's about focusing on getting the rules right before you even think about adding the tech. This little chart here really maps out the journey. Most companies right now are stuck in quadrant one. They're using old ERP rules, looking at dashboards that just tell them about yesterday's disasters. So they try to get proactive and jump to quadrant two. They add AI to that same broken ERP logic and into software that wasn't designed for AI. They just bolt it on like lipstick on a pig. And what happens? You just get faster alerts about the wrong things. It's the classic garbage in, garbage out, but now at the speed of light. The real goal is quadrant four, where you have the right rules built from the ground up in software designed to work with AI from the ground up. But, and this is the important part, there's a catch. Here is the single most important takeaway from all of this. While you can jump from quadrant two straight to quadrant four, you still have to change the behaviors in your shop. Software, along with the right AI, can help ensure processes are followed. But on the shop floor, the physical changes are still needed, unless you're a Velocity Scheduling System alumni. If you're not a VSS alumni, you have to install new, better processes for how work flows through your factory. The right software, I'm partial to IVSS, Intelligent Velocity Scheduling System, can make this easier. But like with most technology, as Goldratt said, it's necessary, but not sufficient to drive results. And really, that leaves us all with one big question to ask ourselves. Take a hard look at the technology you're using or considering. Is it actually helping you build a new, stronger foundation for the future? Or is it just a fancy new way of cementing the same old broken habits that have been holding you back for years? Because honestly, the answer to that one question could change everything.